the sun is finally shining outside Nick's garage. As the cars come out from hibernation, Nick is trying to make some room in his shop. Here's my back glass to my Challenger. Look at that. All right, that's the next piece to go on. We'll work on it slowly. Then I got seat belts to do. This one's ready for delivery. I don't have all the parts, but it'll be brought back in the future. 67 GTX, it's from Ontario. Anyways, for now we put most of the pieces on it that we have and it'll be it will be brought back in the future to be finished off and get it running. So this way I can take a roll test with it. I'm still waiting for a few more pieces to get it going. I don't have a fuel gauge in the tank. I got a few other pieces. He's got a battery on order. We saw the rat here in the air cleaner. He's got the pipe plate missing. But anyways, for now, we're just waiting for a few more other items. We need a fuel gauge in the tank. But uh, I still have a few pieces back order, but I'm tired of waiting because we have no space here in the shop. But in the meantime, we got the brake lights on and we need shifter uh, me mechanism for the automatic transmission. It's all missing underneath the car, so we can't get it running. So in other words, uh, give me some time and uh, we'll take care of it in the future. We had this uh, engine built last year, so uh, we installed it in the car this year and now we're just waiting for a few more pieces to come in so we can get it running so the customer can drive it. I've got the 241 Hemi here, and the 1954 Dodge Royale base car, convertible. I just realized I installed the rockers and the cylinder heads, then I realized there's no screw to adjust the rocker. So I got a little dilemma here. So in other words, I gotta slack the rockers to put the push rods in place. That's why I keep the uh, old parts to make comparison to the new parts, especially on old engines. I got the original lifter here that came out of the engine, and there's the new ones the customer brought in. As you can see, since you have no adjustable rockers, we have to have the we have to make sure we have the exact same parts because if it's not adjustable, everything has to be perfect. So here it is. I'm taking a new lifter and the older one. And if you compare it, you can see there's a difference. So for that reason, it's not gonna work in the car. See, the new lifter is a lot higher than the older one. So look at that. For that reason, it's not gonna work. So I gotta do some research on the, uh, maybe he's got me the wrong lifters, I'm not sure. I know they're hydraulics, but they have to be the exact same height or else this is not gonna work. Right here, there it is. The new lifter with the same push rods, of course, are the same length. I'm just comparing and taking notes. But the new lifter, the push rod is a lot higher. Anyways, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the homework uh, later on. I'm going to pick up the uh, flywheel. We don't have a flywheel, which is a manual uh, transmission flywheel to okay, mount it on my uh, dynamometer or a bell housing, which I don't have. So somehow I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to figure out a way how to put this on the dynamometer because I'm dying to see this on a dyno to get it tested. So uh, in the meantime, let me figure out my push rod, uh, push rod lens with the uh, lifters and uh, with the non-adjustable rockers. Once we solve that, then I'm gonna install the intake manifold, the new timing chain, the new cam, of course, and then we'll take it from there. And hopefully I can set it up to put on the dyno so I can, you, you viewers can see it run on the dynamometer to see what horsepower we're gonna get out of this. And it's rated factory horsepower about 150. Nick loves building and testing old muscle car engines, but he doesn't put together every engine that gets into his dyno room. Some engines are brought in by other builders for testing as is the case with the Ford that's on the dyno this week. But it's a Ford 27 cubic inch Ford engine. So it's a stroke? 
Yes. Quarter inch toe. Yes. Small block. Yes, it's not built by me. It's a customer that brought it in and wants to have it tested. Okay. So we made some testing yesterday. It's a 427 cubic inch small block Ford. But he's got an Intic manifold that's very, very small runners. He's got potential to make way over 500 horsepower if you were to replace it. But I don't think they care. They're getting close to 500 horsepower the way it is. Okay. So it's a driver, it's a simple engine. So we're gonna do some testing today. And right. uh, see when the, when the client comes in, we'll do some testing and we'll take it from there. I don't know this customer. He's coming in today for the first time. I've never met him. His engine builder brought it in here for me to dyno test it. So I did some testing last night. And everything went well. And today the customer's coming in, I believe with the engine builder, and then we'll take it from there. But like I said, he's got a very simple intake manifold, but it's made for a 351 cubic inch, not a 427. Yeah, yeah, wow. So it's not ported or match ported or anything like that. How's the it's a loopy, yeah. It's got a roller hydraulic camshaft in there. Don't ask me the specs. Like I said, I did not build this engine. I haven't had an engine on the diner for a while. I got a Ford engine. Uh, clockwise. It's clockwise? Yes, that's what he told me. Okay. I just, I just do what the engine builder told me. So, okay. like I said, it's not one of my builds. They're here just to test it on the dynamometer. And uh, they just want to make sure everything goes good. We uh, broke in the rings. Of course, we check the oil pressure, we check for oil leaks, everything seems good. So I believe he's called his client to come in today to take a look at it. And if he comes in, run we're gonna get it running. Okay. Sounds good. And I hope he doesn't mind the video. Wow. And it's a Ford engine for you Ford lovers. There is something, small block, 427 cubic inch Ford. Guys, just keep in mind, Nick doesn't care what the brand is on there. Yes, he's loyal to Mopar, but Chevy, Ford, Mopar, it's all the same for Nick. They're all engines, they all need love. Okay, Hemi's and Ford Voyage, it's kind of like a little more partial. <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit more partiality to Fords. Nick has the Mopar, so we cover everyone. It's true that Nick is a Dodge man at heart, but he's happy to be working on any kind of American muscle. But on this sunny day, the Fords seem to be lining up for his attention. It's about time we got some weather, good weather. God, I'm tired of the snow, the cold and the ice, the wind, the rain, ice storms, fed up. See, this is chrome, eh? Yeah. 69, just like the, uh, yeah. no, the boss is a 70. This is chrome from the factory, see that? Yep. I see them black. So I'm trying to figure it out uh, on that Boss 1970 Mustang I got inside the uh, shop, Boss Rio 2. Here's our chrome also. Did you have this chrome or did it came no, from they, the factory? it came like that. It came like that, eh? Here except we, we, except we, 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 for that piece. Yeah, and also the uh, the, the aluminum intake. <clears throat> okay. This is rare, eh? Fortnite Cobra Jet from the Shaker. Yeah. 69 Mark 1. Beautiful. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got a Mark 1 here with a 428 Cobra Jet. Oh, nice. I'm working nice. on a Boss 302 Mustang. I got a Ford engine on a dyno. And uh, and I got your Ford engine on your uh, Cobra. Oh, good. Which we're going to look at right now. Mustang is ready for the road, but the Cobra kit car that came in to have its 302 swapped out for a 351 is having some fitment issues. The problem is with these, you see this little corner right here? It's coming around. The body. Yeah, yeah, this is, this here. yeah, this is way tight, even on this, the way it's designed. We tried the other night with Vasily and uh, we couldn't put them on at all. Yeah. Ah, yeah, because yeah, the antler can see it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So if they've got something else that would clear that, you'd probably be in the clear to fit it in, but that's where the that's where the that's major where the, issue is. Yeah. So these two outer pipes yeah. probably need to have a much more... D yeah, like a very deep uh, which inboard. Is, which is obviously why, when they put it in, they use this type, which are the slidey ones. You know, you kind yes. of wiggle them yes. around and then yes. you tack them and then yeah. you weld them. Yes. That's what they did then, damn it. Because you can fiddle it. And you That's go, right. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll order a set of these. So, but you can do the tack welds. Yes, we can do the welds here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
All it's right. just that we want to go around the body, and hopefully they drop down yeah. for uh, the taller uh, cylinder head on this. Yeah, he's an And I thought we could, I should have, I should have. Vasily was working on it the other night, he kept trying and trying on both sides. Oh yeah, he went on and off, on and off, he goes, Nick, forget it. Yeah. Then, the other dilemma is right here. This is Fox body setup, everything's raised. Now if we put the hood, there is no way this is going to fit. What I, what I nearly bought, and then somebody convinced me that it would be okay, was uh, a low profile manifold. Yeah, okay. That, that drops this by an inch yeah, okay. because I'm not because I think the the oval air cleaner yeah it's it, gonna practically won't won't, won't clear the bulge on that's the bottom. right that's so I'm right. thinking we might have to end up with a small flatter little one which is okay okay you know, okay okay yeah. uh, otherwise I'll buy the low profile one. okay but I was told this should work if we use a round I will try it the reason I didn't put the hood on yet because it is yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. You know, we fabricated a bracket for the power steering to put it in place. We did it. And then we go, wait a minute. After we pulled it in place, we figured out that's way above the hood level. Yeah. You see that? And this too. Unless you want to fill the uh, power steering from the outside of the hood, <clears throat> then it would be fine. Oh, yeah. Nice <laughs> big hole in the bonnet. Yeah, God. Bonnet. I love that word bonnet. That's the word for English. <laughs> bonnet. Yeah, bonnet. bonnet. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I didn't think it went that much. I mean, that's way more than anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I should have gone with the same bloody engine, shouldn't I? Actually, yes. had you gone with the same engine, there's you can get quite a bit of horsepower in yeah, a smaller motor. It's should just, have done that. I wish I would have met you guys in the first I wish uh, I would have told you the 302 like I done for the Boss 302. And me. Same build. Yeah, I know. Would have saved you a We'd lot of these too late. Nick's client is wishing he'd met Nick sooner before he got talked into swapping engines in the car. But now that the 351 is in, the guys are going to make the most of what they've got. It's, this has got to drop completely, so it it's actually got to drops drop down. Like it that. actually drops back into here. Oh, does it? Yeah. Ah, right, okay. And if I'm not mistaken, it actually angles it a bit too, but again, it's got to go a long way down to avoid that. Well, or, or we'll start changing the design of the pump itself. Then we start playing with belts and pulleys and brackets and pumps and pressure hoses, return hoses. And it's, there's a lot on the market for these things. Yeah, so yeah, there yeah. should be there should be a package that'll fit it. Yeah. Get the alternator down tucked underneath and the power steering down a couple inches. Yeah, because this casting is too big, isn't it? It is, very, yeah. very. It just, yeah. You, you're gonna we were hoping we didn't need to do this, but yeah, there's yeah. clearance issues. But Ford, for different packages and the aftermarket, designed a few things where you can tuck the engine in a little tighter because obviously you have less so, real estate. Oh, because you've got to try and bolt yes. it in there as well. Damn, damn it. This is part of the game when you start building and rebuilding old muscle and sports cars. Nick's client will try and return the headers he was sold and Nick and the guys will look for a better solution. Here's a perfect uh, reason sometimes why I don't like headers. They just always get in your way. No matter what you do, they always seem to get in your way. Anyways, that's part of performance. The headers is a big part of performance in this world. So anyways, we're just gonna have to find the right model and make it work. What Shelby did when he first got a AC Cobra, put a small block V8 in there. I'm sure everything was custom made piece by piece by piece. But in this case, we just bought the header completely, brought it here, and hopefully it just fitted like a glove. But in this situation, not really. Everything stops at the shop for a moment when Joe pulls in in his beautiful blue Buick. The car is still running on 6 volts and the original straight 8.
Check out the Cintiq model. Have you ever seen anything so square? Look at that. Nick, you Dude. got the job done. <laughs> I know, I know, I can but see. But you're it. right. Look, two, four, six. You hear it? It's got a miss. Yeah, yeah it does. This is awesome, man. Wow. That's a piece of history, you better believe it. Yeah, it's got a little miss on it. It's missing on the engine a bit. Wow. 52 gear, okay? Full pressure, 18 pounds. Alternator, temperature 180. Looking good, looking good. This is, wow, this is bringing back some history. My God. Look at that. My God. A lot of chrome detail in these cars. Lots of it. And if you didn't know, yeah. this is special. This is special. Yes. You know, it, God, look at this. So many parts on chrome. Look, on just the fender itself as well. How many pieces of chrome? Connector blocks from the factory. You un you, there's no plugs? You no, no, no. You have to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screwdriver. You got seat belts in this car? Nope. No seat belts? No headrest. No headrest, no nothing, eh? No. Lots of safety, eh? Safety, I don't know. Didn't seem to be a concern in those days. Uh, I guess not. Nor the price of gas. <laughs> And check out those humongous horns. Yeah. Yeah, those things are loud. Those things are loud. Yeah, eh? Nice. Wow. Well, the air for the heater comes out through uh, to yep. the grill. Yep. Does it come from the cowl? Nope. Joe, thanks for bringing it by, Joe. Nice. I love the color. What do you call what do you call this color? A light <laughs> you wish. Check this out, eh? Aerodynamic designs, you know, but the car itself was not aerodynamic. But uh, the structures they put on the uh, whatever, they made them air. Like airplanes, torpedoes, look at that. But the car itself, no. Look at that, look at that bounce. Hey, that's original, buddy. Hey my god, this is something, eh? Golden Anniversary, 1953. Buick Owner's Guide. There it is, there's the logo. Nice, eh, Manny? Look at that, even the port's in perfect shape. I'm scared to, uh... To turn the page. Wow. This is Owner's Guide, check it out. So small, so nice. Authorized Buick service. Okay, man, nice. Nick would love to take the big Buick for a ride, but he's got work waiting for him in the dyno room. His client has arrived, and it's time to fire up the Ford 427. Remember, Nick didn't build this engine, so he won't be running any experiments or doing any R&D today. His client brought the engine here for final testing and a dyno run, and that's what he's going to get.
I'm gonna make a pull now. We're gonna start at 3,000, go up 300 RPMs per second to 5,800. pretty flat uh, your torque it's, it's pretty good and it's pretty flat so that should be a good street car the board and stroked Ford is making good power even with the small intake manifold the first pull gives 481 horses and nearly 508 pounds of torque well, we're gonna make another test back to back with the 750 carb and then after that we'll go to an 830 CFM okay we're gonna do another test back to back We're gonna go to 830. We made a few more horses. Yeah. Shit. 488. Okay. All right, this is pretty consistent, eh? Fine. Now we're gonna go with 830 CFM. Okay, let's go with the bigger card now. 650, 830. We're gonna try to hit the 500 horsepower. We just did 48, so let's try an 830 carb and take it from there. Today we have a lot of Fords going on in here in my shop. Very rare, but you know what? Nothing wrong with that. The engine is sounding pretty good with the bigger carb, but it's not making any more power. So Nick decides to go with a 750 CFM, the same size the client will run in the car. And he adds a one inch spacer to the setup. So to give us more plenty in the intake manifold, because I believe this intake manifold needs help. So we're gonna use a spacer one inch called a sucker, super sucker, and we're gonna try it and make another test back to back with the original carburetor that he has, which is a 750. And we leave it at 29 degrees. Just to give it more planium, like it's like putting a bigger intake manifold. This is what I love, making noises in the dining room. Eh, 
going on? Let's make some noises. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. God, I hate that starter. That starter, I hate that starter. It does only on fours. It might run a little bit leaner with a spacer. Semi 50 carburetor. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Look at the torque. Five, almost 530. Pretty smooth, buddy. Yeah. This is nice. The little Ford ended up making 503.3 horsepower and 530.2 torque. That ought to be plenty for the customer's Eleanor build. And if you guys have some time, just look down on the computer, you're gonna see our merchandise. If you guys like any of the stuff, buy it, and you'll love it. Or check out our Patreon slash Nick's Garage. Thank you.